Hey, welcome everybody to another episode of Inside Enduro. Today we're going to switch it up with a little medical science. It's going to be pretty interesting. You're going to learn some things. Anyone who's had a little arm pump, you may want to listen to this. Today we have a great guest, Dr. Joseph C. McGinley. He's a medical doctor and a PhD. This guy is pretty much probably went to school longer than all of us combined. So welcoming Dr. McGinley. How you doing, man? Great. Uh, glad to be on the show today. Uh, excited to, to talk about some of this stuff and, and hopefully we can get, give some insight into arm pump and, and talk about some easy ways to, to take care of it. All right. Some of the treatments again, and most of us who've had this have probably tried at least, you know, a couple of these things and they're you know, pretty common, you know, as far as setting your bike up, right trying to get warmed up, which that's always kind of an interesting thing. When you do a lot of the the hard Enduros, it just seems like the starts aren't always, depending where you go, that organized. And you're out somewhere and they're like, all right, well, uh, riders meeting, uh, then it's 15 minutes late. And you're like, okay, let's go. And so you're basically starting an athletic event with no real warm up where you see the supercross guys i just saw a video clip and they went through and if you see in the back you know you catch these guys are on trainers or they're on an assault bike getting warmed up before a moto and i think that makes it worse i don't know if it's physiologically true that if you did pump your legs up a bit and you had your leg muscles they had their their share of the blood volume as well that if you took off like a wild animal it would take longer to get that blood to your forearms if it's being utilized in your legs yeah you know um as far as getting the blood flowing that that's just overall so even though you're uh, exercising with your leg muscles your your heart rate's increasing and that changes a lot of the physiology uh in in all of your muscles and you know you, you have different um, uh, levels of change within the blood vessels directly. There's sensors in, in blood vessels, receptors are called, and they can change how constricted they are, how tight they are. Um, so you know even just warming up in general, uh, in any way, shape, or form, uh, helps with both upper and lower extremity. You're right. If if they just uh, get a race started and and you don't have time to get warmed up or don't know how long you have to get started, you, you know that that's just the situation with that. A particular race, there's not much you can do about that. But whenever possible, any any amount of warm up, whether it's just jogging or jogging around uh, in the pits, uh, if you have a stationary bike, that can help, especially one that works your arms and legs. Uh, not everyone has that. Obviously, at the amateur level, pretty much no one has that. Uh, but you know, as much as you can do that, that that can help. And then all the other activities, you know, that that's some of the basics that uh, hopefully most people try before seeking medical treatment and and uh, training on a routine basis. Like I said, my my problem was uh, lack of training when I had my uh, arm pump recently. Um, and then overtraining. People can overtrain too much, and the muscles are fatigued, and they don't have the time to recover. They don't have the time to rebuild. Um, icing. So if it is a problem or seems to be a problem, you can ice the area that decreases the swelling, helps to get um, uh, the fluid out. Uh, bike setup, you want to make sure you have a comfortable bike. That's fairly obvious. Um, muscle stretching, uh, you want to, again, make sure the muscles are ready to go. It, it's just like, again, you know, I, I keep going back and forth with the analogy to the, uh, to the bike uh, versus uh, your body. It's the same thing you do, right? I mean, before you go out there and ride, you check the fuel, you check the hoses, you check the, uh, your clutch, you check your brakes, you, you make sure everything's the way you like it, and then you warm up your bike, right? Well, you, you, you've apparently not seen the maintenance program of some of the guys that I know and work with, but yes, I, 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 get, I get your point. Guys, you know who you are. You don't take care of your stuff. Whoa! Uh, yeah, we're, we're talking the ideal situation here, right? Whether someone listens to us or not, that's a different story. Okay. Yeah. Let's keep on that. Ideal, ideal situations. <laughs> this is what you should do. Now, again, uh, do we both do all this? Probably not, but um, it, it's what you should do. Uh, strength training, you know, keeping on your core and then lower body. Uh, as you know, your lower body can can help compensate for your upper body if there's asymmetries or or differences in strength. And and then, you know, getting into the more of the medical treatment, the physical therapy, I, I've seen a lot of people try this to varying degrees, the dry needling, the cupping, deep tissue massage. 
uh, a lot of that's to help with blood flow and, and help with uh, relaxing of the muscles. So, you know, all these things above uh, surgery here are, are some of the classic treatments that uh, you definitely want to try. So, you know, again, I, I would encourage people to, to attempt these things first before uh, seeking medical care. Yeah. And I, I was going to add one more bullet point, and this is something I was looking to help out the other racers is I was going to get a very angry pet badger and I was going to rent them out at races and we chuck the racer in with the badger in the trailer and we'll rent it out for like three minute intervals. And as they run around trying to escape the ferocious badger, once you let them out of the trailer, they should be ready for the starting line and we'll just kind of start a process. Well, you know, if you do that, we can eliminate several of these uh, bullet points here. <laughs> I think <laughs> call it badger therapy. And then, you know, the final thing on classic treatment before we uh, before we get into some of the stuff that I'm doing is, is surgery and and fasciotomies. But you know, as I mentioned in in one of the facts uh, facts early on, surgery should really be the last resort. There's no such thing as a great surgery. Uh, surgery should be used to fix a a specific problem when all other solutions have been exhausted. And and